Well, hello again, everyone. I'm so happy to be here to be able to preach this message on Church Without Walls. I'm so excited about this mini series the Lord has given me. It's called, What Does It Mean to Be Born Again? I want to get straight into the scriptures. I read it last time. Let's read it again. From the book of John, we're going to read uh, verses, uh, chapter 3 and verses 1 to 8. Ready? Let's read. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell from where it comes or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. As we ask the question, what does it mean to be born again? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, all of us, gathered together, either around the television or in the studio. We ask you, Lord, for your anointing. Pour out on us today, Lord. Pour out wisdom, pour out revelation. As we read your words in your word, reveal to us, Lord, the secrets of being born again. As I said to you last time when I was with you, the Bible contains many important truths for those who will follow its edicts. Perhaps none more important than the words expressed to Nicodemus, a leader from Israel, by Jesus Christ in this passage. Today, I'd like to focus on verse 5 as we pose that question again. How can we enter the kingdom of God? Last time I was here, we talked about the meaning of the water and the spirit. You remember? I submitted that the water was referring to a single common bond that every human being shares. We discussed the fact that each and every one of us came forth from the womb of a woman, meaning we were all born of the water. Every human being qualifies for this. However, with reference to entering the kingdom of God, Jesus now lays another prerequisite. He says you must equally be born of the Spirit. I believe there are many good people in the world, some who may be watching this program right now, who would refer to themselves as Christians, yet they have never been, as it were, introduced to the concepts being discussed by Jesus right now. They live their lives as believers, but apparently something is missing. Is that you? I don't know why this is, but the Lord Jesus seems to marvel at the fact that Nicodemus was unable to grasp these things, even though he was a leader in Israel. Now this is particularly perplexing to me as a believer, because the Holy Spirit would not be made available until Christ himself goes to Calvary. And this is the act that ushers in the Holy Spirit, his entry into the earth for the purpose of the salvation of mankind. So why would he be marveling about this? I'm therefore led to understand by this that he said these things more for our benefit than for theirs. With this in mind, you might be one who professes Christianity, perhaps even for many years, but even yet you are struggling to grasp what is being implied here. 
So I would ask you to open your heart to these words as we pray for a moment together. Father, we your children, based upon the words of Christ to Nicodemus, are asking for the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of our understanding to your wondrous word. Do it now, Lord, for us in Jesus' name. You know, in this scripture, Nicodemus poses an impossible and almost ridiculous question to the Lord. As a matter of fact, I believe he's being a little bit facetious when he asks the question, can a man enter his mother's womb and be born again? It's a bit silly when you think about it. But, and and also maybe there was a sense of a little bit of Jewish humor maybe. But I want to bring your attention to something, the key word that he used was the word enter. Say that, enter. The key word here is enter because Jesus in his response poses an even more complex in scenario back to Nicodemus. Again, the Lord is answering the true question of Nicodemus's heart. Remember, we talked about this last time that the first thing that happens when you come into contact with the Lord Jesus is he begins to answer the questions, the real questions in your heart. Not the ones that you ask people publicly, but the real questions of your heart. He says, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You see, Nicodemus talked about entering the womb. Jesus talks about entering the kingdom of God. Now, I'd like to deal for a moment with the issue of the kingdom of heaven. Since many will take this scripture to mean exactly that. A lot of people think that we make our entry into the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven after we die. And this entry is based upon our good works on earth. There are people of other faiths that believe this. Now this thought pattern is not necessarily incorrect, but it's definitely incomplete. At least according to Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. Let's go there together. It says, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Again, I submit to you today that according to the gospel, entry into the kingdom of God begins for us here and now on the earth. Heaven, as it were, becomes a continuation for the one who is born again. Especially since we have already died, we've already been raised, we've already been baptized into Christ. I want you to listen to this statement. And I don't want to condemn anyone, but listen carefully to these words. If you believe that you will go to heaven after you die, not based upon your good works or your abstinences, but rather upon the confession of your faith and the fact that your sins have been forgiven and forever washed away by the blood of Christ, you are born again. And you have the right and passage to enter the kingdom of God here in the earth as a son of God. Not after you die, but here and now. Let's go to John 1 and verse 11 for more evidence of this. John 1 and verse 11. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become children or sons of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born, this is very important, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but born of God. Hallelujah. They've got legal rights. In other words, the law has been passed in heaven, allowing you full access, full provisions, full honor, and full access to the kingdom of God. That's something to praise about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
The one who is born again has full access to the kingdom of God. Do you remember what Christ said to Peter? This was just after Peter had had that wonderful revelation of who Christ is. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The one who is born again has been given authority to enter the kingdom of God. Not after you die, but now. (laughs) Hallelujah. The Lord wants us to exercise our rights and power in the kingdom now, not after we die. Now, we've been asking the question, what does it mean to be born again? Well, here is your answer. To be born again is to become a son of God or a child of God. When you were born of your mother and father, you became the physical offspring, the Bible calls seed, by the way, as in the seed of Abraham. Effectively, you are the seed of your mum or your mother and your father. However, when one is born again, something incredible takes place. There's an upgrade. There's an exchange and a renewal. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Hallelujah. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, perhaps today you may be struggling with something in your flesh. It's part of the old man trying to regain supremacy over the new. Now, God wants you to take encouragement from these words today. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, which is assuring you today, assuring us today, that to be born again is to become a new creature in Christ. If I'm a new creature, that means I can let go of a lot of old habits. If I'm a new creature, I can let addictions go. If I'm a new creature, I can let anger go. I can let depression go. I can let fears go. If I'm a new creature, I can, most importantly, let all my doubts go. Galatians 3 verse 29 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's no more Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. That's something to get excited about. And again, I want to submit to you today another wonderful truth. To be born again is to become part of the family of Christ. Abraham's seed, an heir according to the promises of God. What promises? All the promises, my friend. Yes, all the promises of God belong to the born again believer in Christ. You must be saying, I want to be born again right now. What about the blessings? Go back to Galatians 3 and verse 7, which says, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. As a born-again believer, you can now go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 14. And it's full of marvelous blessings, like, I'll be blessed going out and I'll be blessed coming in. It says your storehouse will be blessed and your children will be blessed. Uh, It says even your pets will be blessed. Everything about those scriptures speaks of blessing. And you can read through them and you can say, because I'm born again, those blessings belong to me. Hallelujah, somebody help me to preach this. This is the most marvelous message. And you know, when you're finished going through those blessings, I don't have time to do it now. Please do it after this message. Read them and declare them over yourself. When you're finished, go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and read what it says. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now, praise God, we're on a journey here, a journey of truth, discovering who the child of God really is and what it really means to become born again. I pray that today your eyes have begun to open. You know, being born again means that you become a child of God, not by the flesh, as according to John 1 and verse 11, not by the will of man, but by the Spirit of God. And you've become born again through relationship. The Greek word is technon. You've become a technon of God, taken on because of the relationship that you have received through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, I pray for the blessing of knowing you to fall upon each and every person who will join me now and say, Lord, I want to be born again. I pray that you would come to know them. In fact, Lord, I know you know them. I pray they would come to know you the way I have known you and the way others like me know you. May your children come to a beautiful knowledge of who you are and be blessed in Jesus' name. Until I see you again, God bless you. Bye-bye.